we don't really talk about our feelings <laughs> and we certainly don't talk about mental health problems i mean who wants to be that person who wants to be the downer of the group that goes and ventures into existential questions and darkness who wants to be the failure the person that struggles when everyone else is putting their best foot forward everyone else seems so happy and so successful while you feel so failed so weak so fragile we live in a world where one out of five Americans struggle with some form of mental health problems. And we live in a world where few people can count on their hand anybody that struggles with mental health problems. Few people know of anybody that has mental health issues or that has struggles. Because we don't know. We have never, they've never told it to us. They never admit it to us. They never let us know. And sometimes, we are that person. Perhaps you are that person. Or perhaps one of your loved ones are. So in this video, I want to talk about ways that depression can manifest. And I want to talk about how people describe and experience depression. And I want to discuss what the key to depression is. Why we get depressed. And what the key is to breaking depression. Now remember, I'm speaking as a human being, not as a mental health professional. And if you need mental health advice, I would say, first of all, try to contact a mental health professional. If you need help, go to somebody that is qualified to be there and to support you. What I want to talk about today is my personal experiences as somebody that has been depressed. When I was in my 20s, I had a burnout. I had been deep rooted in politics. I carried several different positions. I had a lot of different work tasks and I had my studies and full time and it was too much. I hit the wall, I failed and I got depressed and it took me years before I got out of it. And today I wanna to talk about and revisit those days. What was it like for me to be depressed and what did that mean to me? And how did I break out of depression? And how did I learn to start taking better care of myself? Anyways, what are the five different ways of relating to depression? First of all, what I found is some people describe depression as a state of constant anxiety, a state of constant worrying about losing your friends and family members or of uh, losing your job or your work. Uh, of uh, losing your home or missing out or failing your exams in school, you know, there's a feeling of anxiety that, you know, you're going to crash, you're going to hit down, you're going to fail, you're going to lose everything, you know. For some people, anxiety or depression rather is just that. There's a stress and it's constant and it's smoldering under the surface and it's constantly beating you down and sucking your energy away. This form of deep, constant anxiety is very real and it is definitely one form of depression or one way to experience depression. Another form of depression is as a feeling of emptiness. Yeah, a lot of people describe depression as just the feeling of when life has lost its color. Food doesn't taste good anymore. Nothing really feels fun anymore. The games you used to enjoy, the friends you used to spend time with, nothing feels worthwhile. And that's a real and common way of experiencing depression and often it's that just uh, you want to do things you want to enjoy things but you can't you don't feel any joy for it you try but it feels like you're just drifting through it to other people to other people depression is a state of hopelessness there is this feeling like you're never gonna make it like you're never gonna succeed like uh, your career is never going to pay off, like your school and education is never going to lead anywhere. There is the feeling like you're never going to get a house or a family or a partner. There is this feeling like uh, you're never going to make it in the world. And that sense of hopelessness is a very real form of depression. And it's strongly connected to that feeling of anxiety. And it's a, just one way of experiencing that anxiety. And honestly, when you are in that stress, how can you enjoy anything? How can you enjoy what you do? If you feel hopeless, like if you don't feel a few sense of future in what you do, then how can you enjoy it? And that's one of the dangers of depression. That's that one question of how can you enjoy things? 
Another way of experiencing and describing this depression is as uh, stress. And this is a very relatable one for me. For me, when I hit my burnout, I can no longer handle stress. I couldn't handle the stress of my positions at, um, in my political party. I could no longer fulfill the responsibilities that I had on me. I could no longer uh, even show up to school. You know, that all that took so much effort and all of that was so exhausting and so, so very stressful. And to some, that's a way of experiencing depression. It's that uh, everything causes you stress. Even the smallest things cause you stress and therefore you can't enjoy it. Therefore, it doesn't feel possible. You can't have relationships. You can't have friendships. You can't have anybody that depends on you. You can't uh, talk to your parents because uh, you don't want to be reminded of the stress that they you feel projected on you. You know, like all of those things become heavy. But what I've found is the most real and the most difficult thing when it comes to depression is depression as a sense of deep shame. And honestly, I wonder if perhaps this is perhaps the most key one of all. What I've found is when I start to fall into a depressive spiral, what I end up doing is I end up stopping to care for myself. I end up stopping to support myself. I end up stopping to push myself forward. I don't cheer myself on anymore. I don't uh, uh, celebrate my accomplishments. I don't enjoy what I do because I don't feel I'm worthy of it. And what I'm starting to wonder is perhaps shame is the key factor to depression and perhaps it's also what keeps us stuck in it. I mean, let's just talk about the shame of talking about mental health in the first place. How many people dare to talk about shame, uh, uh, about depression in the first place? How many people, famous bloggers, YouTubers out there, do you know that have experienced and talked about having depression? And how many people have you noticed that talk about these things without a sense of shame or embarrassment? I mean, yeah, how can you not feel embarrassed about it? Do you feel stupid? You feel like there's something wrong with you. You feel like other people have been able to do it. So how can't you? How come cannot you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm starting to lose my words here. Now, what I've found is, uh, and this is the problem, is the way we think about mental illness is completely wrong. Mental health problems are not about what's wrong with you. It is about what happened to you. The shame we feel in regards to carrying mental health problems is in many ways unwarranted. I mean, almost anyone who experienced the adversity that you had, anyone, anyone that would have had the upbringing that you had, that would have experienced what you had, would have come out of it experiencing struggle, pain, hardship, stress, anxiety. Anyone would have struggled through what you did. Anyone could have had issues doing what you did or experiencing the things that you did. True it is, mental health problems, they're not necessarily about what's wrong with you, but rather what happened to you. What story are you playing out and have you, what experiences have you had and what have you experienced in your past friendships and relationships and at work? How is it to be at work? How do you feel at work with your boss and with your performance? How do you feel about uh, your being with your friends or in your current relationship? How much are you enjoying the things you do? How much are you enjoying the hobbies you uh, do? How much are you uh, living the best version of yourself? How much are you doing things that you find meaningful? How many things do you do out of sense of responsibility or obligation rather than out of love or compassion? So. Besides the comfy support blanket and my pet plushie over here, I work a lot on maintaining happiness and caring for myself. I recognize today that if I can't take care of myself, if I can't keep myself in a positive spirit, who else will? It's important that you take responsibility for yourself and that you care for yourself. You are your first priority and your first priority must always be to make sure that you are well, that you are fed, that you get sleep, that you get rest, that you get time, that you get breathing room, that you get walks, that you get exercise, you know. Everyone uh, deserves to be cared for and you have a responsibility to try and care for yourself if that is possible. 
And if it's not possible, I would say try to talk to somebody else. Try to find somebody that can help you out. A lot of time, shame is uh, the true killer and the true biggest danger to depression because as soon as um, you experience shame, there's also a sense of denying. A lot of time, when I feel shame, there is a sense of, yeah, I can't go and do something fun or I can't meet up with friends or I can't have that or go and enjoy that because I have so many things that need to be done and I need to work so hard and I need to change myself or I need to work on myself first. You know, there, this feeling like you have to work on yourself before you can enjoy things, before you can enjoy life, before you can live life. You have to work on yourself. I'm wondering why? Why can you not enjoy life while you live it? Why can you not enjoy relationships and connections while you have relationships and connections? Why must you first suffer through life before you can enjoy it? Why must you work yourself to death before you can celebrate the fruits of your accomplishments? Why can you never be happy with the things that you do or have done until you do, do even more? Why do you always feel the need to pressure yourself or to put yourself forward or to change yourself? Why do you feel like you're never enough, never good enough, never positive enough, never kind enough, never uh, intelligent enough to be worthy of your friends or family members? Why do you feel like you always have to be different? The truth is, I don't know everything about depression and I'm certainly not a mental health expert. I'm just a person that has experienced these things and has thought about these things. I'm more than curious to hear about what your experiences are with depression and how it's been for you. And also, what did you do to break out of depression? What did you do to care for yourself and love yourself again after experiencing struggles like these? Thank you all for watching and hope to see you all in the next video.